file. So there are many, many files in the game. And trying to determine which file contains which is going to be very time consuming. So the easiest way in which uh, you can do this is to open up the uh, cast thumb file, which is found in the edit folder. I've just copied it onto my, my local PC uh, to prevent making any changes to the actual game file for now. Uh, I've just labeled it version 1.02, but it's actually called cast thumb. All right, we're going to open this in XPacker using control plus four. All right, you'll notice that there are a number of different files which are connected. Each of these files contains a thumbnail uh, for each of the objects in the creation studio. If you want to try and determine which uh, archive contains which uh, creation studio part, you can uh, extract the thumbnails and take a look at the thumbnails to determine which file corresponds to which. Okay, for instance, I'm going to look at the first one. I'm going to decompose all. And I'm going to specify where I want uh, this to be done. If you look at the files which have been created, there are quite a few BB files which you can delete. And there are also quite a few pack files. The pack files need to, need to be renamed as DBS. So I'm just going to type PMD space, which will open up a command window in the direction in which we're working. I'm going to type rename star.pack to star.dbs. All right, we can see that these are uh, ARM accessories. Okay, you can do this for the remaining files to determine which files corresponds to which. The second option you have is if you are a bit more of an advanced user, is you can open up a cast thumb file in a hex editor. Scroll all the way to the end. Uh, scroll slightly up, and you will notice that there's a zlib file listed at the end. Okay, you can copy the zlib file into a new file. Okay, I'm going to save this file as names.zlib. All right, there are you can decompress this file using XPacker by clicking on utilities, decompress file with header using zlib, names.zlib, and then specify what you want to save the file as, names.zlib.decompress. All right, you can open up this file in a hex editor, and you'll notice that this file lists which part corresponds to which pack file. All right, now if you look at the directory listing here, the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bytes list the name of the file. So if you look at the files in XPacker, it corresponds to the files that are listed in the uh, hex editor. So this will tell you that the file f 5 e 3 one etc is for ARM accessories. Okay, you notice that it's, list, it's listed for every single pack file, which is contained in the SHTC archive. All right, so whichever method you want to use is up to you, depending on how proficient you are with, an X, with a hex editor. All right, so now that we've identified which uh, pack file contains uh, which uh, creations could be a part, we are ready to identify the individual file that we need to open. All right, the values which are listed uh, for the thumbnails is the name of the pack file multiplied by 100. For instance, if you look at 00C8, you enter this in a calculator, this will give you the value of 200. Okay, if you divide this by 100, this will tell you which pack file this corresponds to. So 00C8 is actually tight to. All right, another example. A, it, C, divided by 100 is um, tides 27, for instance. This will help you identify which pack file corresponds to which item in the creation studio.
uh, now that we've determined which type file we want to work with, um, we can start editing the textures in this file. For this example, I'm going to use the types 4 through 2, which I've put onto my machine. I will open this file using Control plus 4. Double click the SSDC file and we decompress the double zero double zero file, which is printed. All right, we click on file, open Creation Studio back archive, and we select the file. Even though it's listed as a wire object file, it's not actually a wire object file, it's a pack file. Okay, this will list all of the files which are contained in the archive. I'm going to click decompress all because there are a few set of files here as well. All right, so for this example, we're going to be working with textures only. You'll notice that there are four texture files uh, which are extracted. Now, in order to work with the, uh, the types DDS texture file, which is basically how the object will appear in the Creation Studio, uh, mode, you need to have the uh, Intel DDS plugin installed for Photoshop. The reason for this is because the format of this uh, uh, DDS file is DXT10, which the NVIDIA uh, DDS um, plugin cannot uh, work with. The other files are DXT1, and um, these can be opened by the uh, NVIDIA plugin. All right, so I'm going to double click this file. Uh, because I have the, uh, the Intel plugin installed, it is able to open the DXT10 file. So the, the plugin asks you if you want to load the transparency as an alpha channel. You select that and you click OK. All right. Okay. Now this is the DXT10 file. So you can make whatever changes you want to this file. Uh, and this will control how the object will appear in the creation studio. All right, I'm going to file save. And you need to ensure that you have the Intel Texture Works uh, DDS option selected. I'll select types. Okay, so these are the settings that you need to have enabled uh, in order to replicate the format, which is uh, required for the game. So color plus alpha, you need to save it as DXT10, no mud maps. All right, the second file that's uh, I'm going to work with is the uh, masking file. Uh, so ensure that you select load transparency as alpha channel. Okay, so the masking file controls the coloring for each individual layer. So this allows you to specify colors independently of each other in the creation studio. So the main color of the types is stored in the alpha channel. So the area that is white is the area that will be controlled by creation studio. Okay, so you can see that all of the logos will not be colored by this layer. If you look at the next layer, it has a few logos which are enabled in white. This has different logos enabled in white. And this has different logos enabled in white. All right, so each of the channels for the red, green, and blue uh, controls the coloring of each of the logos independently. For instance, if you look at the the texture that I've created for uh, Hogan, I've got each of his uh, individual logos in each of the channels. And for the alpha channel, I made the tights white, okay, excluding the logos. All right, so this texture must be saved in a specific format. So we need to click File Save As, then select the NVIDIA plugin. Okay, I'm going to save it as tights mask. Okay, the format that you need to select is 4.4.4.4. Okay, no mid-maps, and you hit save. All right, now we're going to work with the MR and the uh, tights underscore M textures. Right, so these textures are pretty much the same as you uh, 
same as the textures that you would use for your wrestler mods. Uh, the format of both these textures is um, DDS, DXT1, no mod maps. Uh, the same for the tights underscore n. All right, once you uh, are happy with the changes that you've made, you can inject these back uh, into the relevant slots in Xbacker. Uh, and once you're happy with injecting all of the textures, you can inject this back uh, into the uh, tights archive. If you're going to try and inject into the SHDC file, which is provided with the um, creation studio object, you find that uh, you get an error. So you're going to create a new pack archive. This is control plus P. We select uh, the file that we just worked with and we say create pack archive. I'm just going to call it tights object. All right, then I'm going to open up the uh, tights archive. And I'm going to inject the one we've just created. All right, you copy this back into the game, and uh, this will implement the changes that you've just made. If you want to create a thumbnail for your new object in a Creation Studio, you need to uh, replace the thumbnail with the correct ID, uh, which corresponds to the Creation Studio part that you've just worked with. This file needs to be saved as DXT1 with normal text. Right, if you are injecting into the, uh, the cast thumb file, I would recommend using the compress and inject function so that uh, the offsets are not changed as uh, there are a significant number of files which are contained in this archive and it will take a very long time to recreate the archive. Whereas the compress and inject function will not change any of the offsets, so your injection process will be a lot faster. If you find that you cannot uh, compress enough, uh, to inject into one of the slots, you can resize uh, the image. So the image is 256 by 128. You can make this 128 by 128 and hit save. This will create a smaller file which can be injected into the cast thumb archive. Once you copy the cast thumb file to, to your game directly, the game will display the correct thumbnail corresponding to the object which you've just created. All right, so that's it. Um, so I've shown you how to edit the actual Creation Studio parts, as well as how to uh, create a thumbnail for your new Creation Studio parts. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to post in the comment section below, post on my thread on Spec Talks, or send me an email. Until next time, enjoy modding the game.